Now here once again at the Soho Lift and I'm here with Chris who is an incredible film director and producer but I'm sure he's going to elaborate on exactly what that looks like for him. More of a writer really. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so you, Troublemaker. You, you're a writer and then you direct so you can control your writing and then you produce so you can control you know, it all and then you raise money to control the whole thing you know and so that's what happened to me. Basically. So you've kind of just kind of built your way up kind of thing haven't you yeah well from um covid was where i had made that switch because uh, i didn't get paid for a job uh, and i was chasing that job and I, they owed me a couple of grand blah 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 but i really needed it at the time we need to hear stuff like this by the way chris you know because yeah. sometimes people think they're kind of on their own in these situations Absolutely. so let's hear it um and i i I started getting sort of like money books and I thought how hard can this be to, to raise finance and uh, just studied it for like six months and mm. then I went out there, created a load of pitch decks and went pitching and I managed to raise money, I managed to raise 40,000 actually. Congratulations! Um, but my point to that is uh, it, was, it was no harder than writing a script, raising finance. So if lockdown hadn't happened, I still would have been struggling, scratching my hair out, I'm going to raise money, they've not paid me, blah, blah, blah. But it's just like just applying myself to that process. I think really many people, but I think many people found their talent during that time. Absolutely. That's when people yeah. got to know who they were, I yeah. think, for many. Absolutely, yeah, I agree. And for, in obviously some cases were, might have been quite tragic. Of course, but of obviously course. The, Can't those. Yeah, yeah, obviously a lot of self-evaluation. Mental health definitely came into play then, definitely. Yeah, and, mm. I, and I, I would, it's fair to say I had an existential crisis. Okay. Um, so, uh, but that's not a bad thing. If not come, at all. If you come out good. Obviously. It's called growth. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so now the film that was not paying me is going to be released this year. Look at that. Basically. Look what came out of that. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, uh, You'll be fine. Yeah, they're paying me now. It's all right. Loads of people got sacked, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. And um, it's uh, Eddie Hall's in it, Arnold Schwarzenegger's in it, Sylvester Stallone's in it, and amongst other people, loads of people. Can you hear this? I, can, you guys are something. You say blase with it, but this is, inc this, this is inc like an incredible level you've got to. Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, it's been very painful. That's why I'm, I'm sort of not. And, yeah. I, and it isn't released yet. I just want it to be released yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. So it's my first documentary. Beautiful. And it's taken six years. Beautiful. I've shot it in about five or six countries. And, Incredible. And, yeah, here we are. So, you know, it's just another project at the end of the day. And I just, you know, just there's, there's a few things I really want to do. I want to do a really good prison film, which I'm sort of like into at the moment. I want to do a really good film about the drug trade. Uh, I want to do a really good boxing film and then, and then, then I'm done. Cool, so, cool. They, they so be, you, they you've be got good. a goal then? You've got a goal and yeah. kind of like a ceiling where you want to get to? Well, the best be good. I don't want to make a shit film. Do you know what of I mean? Course. So all the stuff that I was talking about on that panel, I've yeah. got to sort of like follow it to the letter, you know, get your scripts rigorously consulted and just get them to the best point on paper. Mm. So when you go out there, everyone's saying, yeah, yeah, I love that, I love that, I want to do it. So of course. Instead of rushing myself into the director's chair like, like a lot of people do. <laughs> well, it, you know, that you speed yourself into the chair because of lots of reasons, lots of reasons, the adulation, you know, the byproducts, the awards, you know, money, potential for money. Of course. And then you rush yourself so fast that the, the project just dip dives because you haven't gone for the most important thing, which is the storytelling. Um, and with the storytelling, the byproducts will follow. Of course. Um, and that's, I think that's an important lesson that I sort of took for myself, my own career, and also on that panel, I was telling a lot of the young filmmakers that it's just really important. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. I mean, when you actually get in the zone, because obviously you have to get in the zone to do this, where do you, where do you go for that? Um, well, it depends. It's just it's different because obviously, if you're mm -hmm. writing, you're just sort of like you're at home, you're at the terminal, um, sure. or you're on the laptop and sure. in the cafe. But because I'm directing as well and producing as well, it's like it's just like the, those different hats. Okay, there's a side of me that's really sort of like insular mm -hmm. and really kind of like contained sure. and really kind of like quite shy. 
but that's the writing side. Sure, and sure. And there's a side, producing, Lovely. directing side that's totally social, loves being out and about. So it's two, like, a bit, bit of a Jekyll and Hyde. But in the last And it's five, needed. It, in this industry, it is needed. I don't care what anyone says. When you are creator, creative inside, you, you have to wear different hats. That's just a fact. That I, th I think that's just part of the journey, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And you're right. And I, I've, I've just been fusing the two. Like, for Lovely. example, I've been writing for a few days now, and I've, I've, I've been a bit, sort of like, I turned a bit weird. <laughs> Do you know what no. I mean? I'm out now, I'm out. Like, I'm out of a case now, I'm out like, amongst the general public, so I'm, I'm about I love now. It. So, um, that's good, that's good. It's good to get both. It is. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be, because uh, you know, obviously some people like their own company, and if you're a writer, you've got to, really, because you're sort of like researching and doing a lot of like lone time. Sure. Um, yeah, soul searching and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but it's so. necessary, I think, for for the industry that you're in. And as I said, because you Absolutely. do write and you do produce, and I'm yeah. sure that you have you acted in any of your films or done anything before no, like that? No, I haven't. I haven't. No, no. I, I, I mean, I'd slip into the, I'm doing a prison film, and I, I would. There's a, it's 1981, so there's a load of black inmates, a load of white inmates. There's yeah. a bit of a race war going on, yeah. and so I would be one of those black inmates, pop a wig on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Scowl, do you know what I mean? Beard. I would do that, I would do that. Just walk you've around. seen this, so you've had the vision, that's why yeah. you're talking this. Exactly, exactly, yeah. That might happen. And, and we were talking about getting a rapper in there, you know. Nice. I don't know, Stormzy getting a wig. Yeah. Or something like that. No, I'm only joking, not, probably not Stormzy. Someone. <laughs> I don't know any rappers. Stormzy, you know, listen in. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, so I'm sure that, look, so one of, uh, it's, it's really important to just maximise your marketing opportunities. So um, I've done a behind the scenes of a, a Rise of the Foot Soldier film like a few years back and uh, Big Nasty was uh, behind the scenes because they knew Big Nasty had a big following basically yes, yes, and so yes, they just yes. chucked him in yeah um, yeah he seemed to do alright yeah he seemed to do alright so just that sort of ethos and, and, and you know, marketing is really important isn't it on the back end to get people to sort of, sure you know, sure sure yeah well, I've interviewed a lot of that talent from uh, Rise really? of the Foot Soldiers yeah, yeah, yeah Terry yeah. Stone Terry Stone yeah. uh, Andy Andy Lovejoy, Andy Lovejoy yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. is it Neil Neil, Neil as well Neil Neil, Neil. Well, he's director so Neil Jones. No, Neil, is it Neve? Oh, Neil, you're, if you're watching this, you're going to get me. <laughs> Go on, you already. No, oh, no, no, I love Neil. No, 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 I love Neil. No, leave, no, leave him alone. Neil's all right. Neil's my yeah. mate, remember me, you know? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, all I can honestly say is you've done really well by the sounds of it. You know, you really do need to be proud of yourself. Work in progress, yeah. I and mean, there's lots to do. Um, but I like, I like the hustle, I like the hard work, and yeah, it's, it's just a muscle for me. And, you know, it's like you're doing something that you love and it's sort of not work, but it's still still hard. But yeah. it's just, it just makes it easier um, when you're passionate about yeah. it all. Yeah. Well, that, that's what keeps you in it, though. Absolutely. You know what I mean? If you ain't got the passion there, you'll fall off like, at any time. Yeah. But although it's painful and everything, you, you just keep going, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. OK. OK, yeah, I was just talking about um, the uh, Eddie Hall film. So what yeah. happened was I went to Eddie Hall's house at right at the beginning of the documentary, right? Sure. And um, I, we started talking about his, uh, I don't know, the stuff that he's achieved, Welsh Strongest Man, stuff like that, lifting a half a tonne off the floor. Wow. And um, we started talking about his nan. And he sort of started crying. And I was like, what's this? What is going on here? And about for about an hour, we spoke about what's going on in his head, like his yes. mental health. Yes. And I realised yes. it's not a sports documentary. It's about a man dealing with his mental health. And, and that mental health, those mental health problems had been sort of like branching back since he was a teenager. And that's what the film came about. So we've been around the world asking Arnie, uh, Stallone, and just loads of other sort of like celebrated people. Their challenges, basically. Mental health, yeah, and yeah. you'd be amazed what sort of comes out of those little stories, yeah. So that's how that uh, project started. But it was going to be a straight sports doc, but then mm. just going around this house and seeing him cry like that, I just I had this like brainwave that this is about something else. Yeah. So, and that's, that's it, that's what it's about. That sounds absolutely incredible, yeah. and I'm looking. Going to be, I'm going to be following you, looking out for what you're doing now, oh, as yeah. well as at some stage I'm coming in one of those films of yours. Oh yeah, <laughs> as acting, acting. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Okay, this is the audition. You've got to do an impression. You can do an American accent. Oh, that's what I mean, I'm working on. No, you know what? I've got a shoot. I'm working on. I'm oh, trying, really? Okay. I'm yeah, trying to, yeah, I'm yeah, literally yeah, trying to work on that right yeah. now. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I'm always amazed by people that just like do like loads of accents because yeah. it's great. You, can do, you just cross the pond and become an American, great, it's fantastic. I know, isn't it? I know. I can Get only do the up northern, the northern stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. But, but I'm yeah, coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great, that's great. No, it's good to hear, it's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. I think you feel sorry for me. 
Not yet. No, no. At the end, I feel sorry for you, but you've got the whole, you know, you've got the, well, lots of journey to go. You might just smash it, you know. Uh, absolutely. So, I'll receive uh, that. I'll receive that. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, Chris, yeah. you've been absolutely incredible. Oh, thanks very I'm much. I'm looking sure. forward to your future because you sound like you've got a lot also going. I mean, this clearly is once again the beginning for you and for many. Yeah. So, um, yeah, okay. we look forward to seeing you soon. Lovely to meet you. This Thank is you. Chris. Cheers. Thank you. Love it. Nice one. Chris, producer, director. Incredible.